Hello everyone, Triple S back is more Professor Layton and Pandora's box, and I think we're going to have a lot to do uh, this uh, video, so we're going to leave the room, so we are leaving the room, we're not talking to Flora. Uh, we walk down to leave the hotel. Oh, everything I've seen leads me to believe that Dr. Schrader visited Falsense. He leaves me boxed in the facts we need to solve the mystery of his death are close by, I'm sure of it. Do you think you ever stole the Elysian box and might be hiding here as well? It's still too early to tell, but I'll know more if we can work out why Dr. Schrader ventured out here in the first place. For now, our best course of action is to search for anything connected to the Elysian box. Let's go get it then! Oh, let's get to it then. <laughs> Read that completely wrong. Lead the way, Professor. Okay, so we continue down. And in this place, we talk to this guy, Rory. Welcome to Full Sense, where you can dream big and make those dreams a reality. Once you get stinking rich, in Full Sense, making a huge fortune is child's play. And I guess you two came here to get your hands on some of that Herzen money, am I right? What Herzen money? You came all the way here and you don't know about the Herzen fortune? That's <laughs> rich, pal. <laughs> Here's the story. Once upon a time. Oh, a long time ago. That's even better. A long time ago, the big cheese here in Falsen's Duke Herzen uh, found the mother of all gold deposits. There was so much gold you couldn't spend it in a lifetime. Then not too long ago, the old man croaked and now his money sits abandoned in his castle. How's that for an interesting story? Right. However, we're not here for treasure. Rather, we seek an item known as the Elysium Box. You may also have heard it referred to as Pandora's Box. Pandora's Box? Isn't that a novel? I can't really help you, to be honest. Wow, you were useless. Thank you very much. Okay, so we walk back up. And we continue back up. Ooh, Beluga. Mark my words, Samuel. It's here in town, I can guarantee that. You had to scour every inch of this place and bring it back to me as soon as you find it, okay? Oh, come on, Unco. Do you really think it's everything people say it is? I don't know, it kind of sounds like a load of baloney to me. Are my ears playing tricks on me? I could have sworn you just told me that my information was wrong. You're in no position to be lecturing me on this subject. Now get out of there and start looking. Okay, okay, no need to... Blow a gasket, I'm going. What do you think Mr. Beluga with the train conductor were talking about, Professor? It would appear that they too are out on the hunt for something. Look, Professor, what on earth could that be? Ooh. It's some strange sort of book. Perhaps someone dropped it while running around town? Yikes, take a butcher's at this crazy symbol on the cover. Let's have a look. The symbol seems to be in the shape of a goat. Well, whatever it is, it gives me the heebie-jeebies, but I do wonder what's written inside. It's hard to tell, these locks mean we can only read the first entry. Still, so this symbol intrigues me. Say, Professor, maybe somebody in that antique shop over there can tell us something about it. Excellent idea, Luke. Let's be begin our investigation there. The old diary option has been added to the trunk. What? Oh, we got a new thingy. Beluga seems to be working Sammy like a dog, sending him, sending him all over town in a frantic search for some unknown item. It's unclear why Beluga would set up a secret train line connected to false ends, but it's clear this item is very important to him. What could it be? Uh, the professor and Luke decide to visit the local antique shop. Also, I just want to mention that this game, when it does finish, there's like extra things. And I'm pretty sure that old diary thing that it mentioned then is like an extra thing you can do after you finish the game. It's like more puzzles and stuff. I'm not going to be doing them. I'm just playing through the actual normal game. And when it says end of game, that's when I'm finishing. I'm not going to continue on and do the extra puzzles and stuff because there's not really any point. Oh, we also got a journal entry, which it didn't tell us about, which kind of is kind of annoying. I wish it would. What a millionaire seeks. Beluga and Sam, the train's conductor, are here in false senses as well. From what I can tell, this isn't their first time here. It's clear they're both turning the town upside down in search of something, but as to what 
that something might be, I'm still without a clue. The locked book. While walking about town, Luke and I came across a diary-like book. The book is fitted with a number of locks that prevent me from reading the majority of its contents. The cover is adorned with a sinister-looking goat, which has piqued in my interest. I wonder what, if any, sig significance it might have. Okay. Wish it would tell me when I got a journal entry. Um... Oh, open, oh, no, it's telling me to open the old diary. Oh, it's actually a... Th oh, it's there! I mean, it's actually a thing here. But it still stands, the extra puzzles and stuff that open up. I'm not going to be doing them, but old diary. We've got to have a look at it. Such an entry to read it. I met the most enchanting girl at the ball we held last night. These parties are usually a complete bore, but her presence changed all that. As the Duke's son, the... The unfortunate reality is that most people are overly polite and fawning towards me, but this girl was warm and real and treated me like she did everyone else. It was very refreshing indeed. I do hope to see her again. It sounds like Princess Margaret from The Crown, but instead of a guy, it's a girl. It's like she loved people not giving a crap that she was a princess. Anyway, um, are we in the right place here? Okay, hint coin time. So this barrel with stuff in it, looks like eggs maybe or something, up in this top left corner, this like railing thing, or pipe, no that's a pipe, not a railing, and at the base of the lamp post. Okay, and we enter the door on the left, we just click it, there we go. Ooh, hello, it's him. Um, but first thing coins, under the chair on the left, uh, under the folding stool thing on the right, folding table, whatever you want to call it, and in the umbrella rack. Our umbrella holder. And now we speak to Chelney. He has a lot to do this episode. Speak to Chelney. Where did you come from? Ha! Huh. Took the words right out of my mouth, laddie. Wasn't expecting to see you two in a place like this. After some field work in Dropstone, I was able to deduce that this town had an Elysium box that linked. Dr. Schrader had stockpiled quite the stack of research on the Elysium box. The criminal I'm in pursuit of more likely than not killed the doctor to get his hands on the box. So instead of chasing the man, I decided to chase the box. When I find it, I'll find the culprit. Wow, that's a solid bit of reasoning there. I didn't think Inspector Chelmer was that sharp. Hey, did you say something, lad? Um, no, sir, not a word. Good, because I've got no time for idle chit-chat. I've got a murderer to catch and cat back to London. Come along, Barton, we're leaving. Hey, where were you hiding? Huh? I mean, yes, sir. Okay. We got yet another journal entry. The inspector resurfaces. It seems that everyone has found their way to False Sense. I just ran into the inspector in Constable Barton. The inspector explained that they are in town collecting information on the Elysium box. If I could just get him to cooperate with me, we could learn a great deal about this place in very little time, but he seems determined to work this case on his own. And now we talk to this gentleman in the back. Good day! Are you out shopping for anything in particular? I apologise, but we're not here to shop today. There are a few things we'd like to ask you about, however. Firstly, there's this book we found. We're also wondering if you'd ever heard of an antique known as the Elysium Box. Oh dear, here we go with that box again. You know, you're the third person to ask about it today. The third? Those two detectives you saw were just asking about it, and half an hour ago there was a young lady. She seemed interested in knowing whether anyone had been searching around town for the box. Ah, can you describe this young lady? Oh, she was quite the beauty. She wasn't a local, but she had a face that seemed somehow familiar. And the, ah, and the officers, well, they said they were here on an official police investigation, if I could read. I'll tell you what I've told everyone today. I wish I could help, but this box raster is news to me. One of my customers, I forget who, mentioned something about the box having quite a history behind it. If the thing was ever in false sense, it could have been in the Herza Museum. I suggest you check there. Where might we find this museum? Just look for the big building in the middle of town on the north side. The museum houses a wealth of documents celebrating the history of our town. This is all extremely useful. Thank you for your suggestion. We'll be sure to pay the museum a visit. Oh, before you run off, did you mention that you'd also found a book? Yes, that's right. Please feel free to take a look at it. Oh, quite an unusual construction for a book of its age. Lovely work and very rare, I'd say. Would you happen to know anything about this symbol on the book's cover? I was just about to comment on how familiar that symbol seems, though it has no significance I'm aware of. 
I must confess what drew my eye to the book was its locks. All the gadgets of this sort always fascinate me. Its construction is very basic, so you might be able to open the locks with any old key you find. As a matter of fact here, why don't we see if this one does the trick? Think of it as my way of thanking you both for showing me something interesting. Many thanks, my good man. You got a diary key. Use it to open a new chapter of the old diary. Oh, it's too bad we didn't find out more about the, that book. It certainly would have been nice, but we'll have to put the book aside for now. It's time to pay a visit to the Herzen Museum. Professor and Luke decide to visit the Herzen Museum. Okay, we got another journal entry. Through talking to a local shopkeeper, we've learned of an institution known as the Herzen Museum. I believe that we might... Herzen. I was saying Herzen. Herzen Museum. I believe that we might find some information pertaining to the Elysium box there, and I am planning to visit it next. And then we have the diary. We've got the second entry. I had the great fortune of bumping into that girl from the ball again today. She is the daughter of some fancy lord or another, and it shows. Her intellect is matched only by the grace she displays. To be honest, I'm quite taken with her and have already started courting her. However, I fear that father seems less than pleased with the idea. Poor guy. Okay, so we... Uh, leave the shop. Oh, I found out about you, Missy. I know you've been asking around town about that box. Oh, but I just... And before you say anything, I don't care who your old man is. No one's above the law. In my eyes, anyone out chasing the easy box moves to the top of my list of suspects. No, you've got it all wrong. Um, sir, if you wouldn't mind. What is it, Barton? Can't you see I'm in the middle of something here? Um, yes, about that, sir. The criminal we seek killed a man to obtain the Elysian box. The villain should have it already. If the young lady was our culprit, she'd have no need to ask around about the box, in my opinion, sir. Oh, is that so now, Barton? <laughs> I don't recall ever asking for your analysis of the situation. T terribly sorry, sir. Please forgive my momentary lapse in uh, judgment. I'll just be going now. <laughs> but I have to get back here this instant, you pulchered. Hey, that's the girl we saw at Jobstone Station. What was her name? Katie? No, that's not it. I believe you're thinking of Mr. Anderson's daughter, Katia. Yes, that's the one. I wonder what she's doing here. Huh. Okay. Um, we walk up. We have some hint cards. The fact it's just on top of these three buildings. Like, just click around and you'll find them. Hint coin, hint coin, and the chimney of the left building. Now, I'm pretty sure we talked to... Oh! It's Stash and Scarfen! What is that across... The... What? Why is... Where's that line come from that's across you, dude? <laughs> now, there's a couple of mugs I've seen before. Hey, I know you! And I know fate, because that's what brought you, me, and that swanky tea set of yours together. Now that we're all reunited, I say we celebrate it with a cup of tea. Bring me something nice, would you? You want us to make tea for you? That's right, with a snapper, but nothing fancy. A cup of citrus classic will do the trick. It's so easy to make, even a baby could do it. A baby with a magic tea set, that is. Anywho, all you need is some oasis leaf, a little brisk berry, and a sprinkle of citronia seed. And now we're making tea for this git. Uh, what the hell do we do? Serve. Did I do good? Fantabulous. A smile spreads across Dash and Scarfin's face. He seems restored and cheerful. What the hell's this line, though? This line is actually in the game. I don't know. It's a bit weird. <laughs> Not a bad cup of tea you make, shorty. Of course, you couldn't have pulled it off without my expert direction, so don't get cocky. You know, this town is filled with thirsty folks. You've got the tea set, so the way I see it is your responsibility to help people. If you manage to help everyone out with the tea break, good things will happen. This I promise. Gosh, Professor, what do you think? How much good can we really do with just a cup of tea? Oh, a fair bit, Luke. A gentleman never under underestimates the power of a hot cup of tea. Oh, well, when you put it like that, I suppose it couldn't hurt to spread some happiness. Um. Uh. Tip. 
Okay, so we don't talk to this guy. I'm just reading, like, extra stuff. It says, like, tip. If you've served 25 teas and think Stash and Scarf and Tea Break is the one that you've missed, see the fact. So I'm just reading that. But, yeah, you only... Apparently in the US it's called the Bell Classic. Why isn't it just called the Citrus Classic? Do Americans not have citrus? Anyway. We walk... Okay, we walk down and then back up until this dude that we just met is thirsty. How do we know when he's thirsty? Does he say that he's thirsty? It just says continue walking down and back up until he's thirsty. He doesn't say click on him until you know he's... Oh, there we go. I'm guessing that means he's thirsty. Uh, hey, you boys are from out of town, am I right? You certainly are. How did you work that out? Because uh, I am too. Plus, I've got a trick for working out who's local and who's not. Well, that sounds handy. Can you teach me how to do it too? Duh, sure, why not? But not for free. Tell you what, I've been feeling a bit down lately. If you can make me go, <laughs> again, I'll show you how to do it. Well, I imagine we might be able to whip up a classic cup of tea that will excite your taste buds. Well, that sounds delicious. I haven't had tea in uh, um, a very long time, ages. Okay, so which one are we serving this guy? Just the classic again? Yeah, we're just serving him a classic. Classic tea taste, so we're just serving the classic citrus. Now that's good tea. A smile spreads across Derby's face as he lets out a contented ha-ha. ha Now that's the stuff. I tell you, the classics really are the best. That goes for tea too. We felt the power end of the deal, so spill the beans. How do you tell outsiders from locals in this town? Oh, it's a piece of uh, pudding. Just get up real close and give them a sniff. Seems like most people from out of town smell like roses. That makes sense. I see. That makes sense, because, you know, they bring the roses in to make them stuff. Anyway, we talk to this guy again to get a puzzle. Finally, we get a puzzle. Got the YouTube. Sure are running around a lot. Makes me tired just watching you. <laughs> Might you rest a while with a, this puzzle I've got here? God, really? It's going to be over 20 minutes long, this video. Four yeah, I thought I'd pick again. Flower bed from Puzzle 89. Here are four circular flower beds, each with a radius of 10 metres. The way they're arranged forms the space between them. Can you find the area metre squared of the section coloured red below? You know the width of the border around the flower beds when calculate your answer. I, I, I cannot figure this out. I probably would. I'd probably be able to maybe do a guess, but you know, stuff it. I'm not going to try and figure it out. Hint number one. Uh, don't bother thinking about. Is that pie? I can't read it. I need to zoom in more. Of my. Uh... Yeah, it says pie. I couldn't read it. I had to zoom in more on my uh, PNG of the uh, the guide page from the website that I found this on the blogspot thing. Everyone knows about it. Uh, don't bother thinking about pie. You don't need it to solve this one. I wasn't even thinking about it anyway, apart from eating it. If you draw straight lines between the four centre points of each of the flower beds, it makes a square. Hit number three. Uh, from the points where two flower beds touch, draw two diagonal lines that cut through the centre of the diagram and end where two of the flower beds touch. These two lines should divide that middle space between all four flower beds into four new sections. What can you learn from these four sections? I got no goddamn idea. Okay, apparently it's this. The area of the red section is apparently. Oh my god, what? Ugh. That's number six, you dumbass. Ugh. Yeah, there you go. That's f Doing this with a mouse is difficult. It should be. 400. Submit. Let's see if he says it's right. It's right. I would not have been able to figure that out in a million years because I hate math and I hate all those goddamn figure out the distance and the diameter and the width and all this goddamn stupid crap. Nice job. The red section has an area of 400 square meters. If you quarter the space between the flower beds and fit the pieces to the circular shown of the diagram on the right, I literally got it right. It's on the right. 
you can turn the circle um, into a square. Once you do, the size of the square will have the same length as the diameter. Single flower bed, 20 meters. Square this number to get the area. Ah, oh, damn it. It's making me go cross-eyed. Reading all that, it's making me go cross-eyed. God knows, I would never have been able to figure that out in my life. Golly, you ran through that puzzle so fast it made my head spin. Because I was doing, I was following a guide, dude. You're just one of those people who does everything, huh? I get tired just thinking about it. You got the ingredient pepper cherry. Use it to create new blends. Puzzle 89, flower bed fun. It's now in the puzzle index. Are we making another thing? No, we're just carrying on with the next puzzle. Okay, I think next time we will be making a new blend of tea. But not this time because the like ingredient stuff is in the next like PNG. Anyway, yeah, I would have never been able to figure out that puzzle in my life ever. And oh my god, this is over twenty minutes long. Wow. If I actually actually try to figure that puzzle out, it would have been like maybe forty minutes before I even got close or gave up if I actually tried to do it, but I knew I wouldn't be able to do it any quicker than just following the guide. <laughs> so anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time for more Professor Layton, if I could speak, and Pandora's Box, where I know for a fact that next time we're going to brew a new cup of tea, and now we're just going around serving people cups of tea for free. Well, technically not for free, that guy did give us a fact that if you smell someone who's out of town, they smell like roses, which is you know, kind of obvious because they bring roses in that make you go to sleep and stuff, so... Yeah, but we'll see what the future brings for next time and hopefully it's not a stupid, annoying math puzzle that is stupid and annoying. So, thank you all for watching. I shall see you all next time. Good. <laughs>